first in the, no yes so if rakesh is rakesh pandey is here yes sir i'm here sir thank you so welcome to <clears throat> professor rakesh pandey rakesh pandey is a well known name in the field of uh, history and social science uh, a, a, a scholar of international repute and uh, we look forward to such scholars from other fields who are interested in indian knowledge systems uh, like we have siddharth singh here who teaches english in lucknow and many some many such scholars are here with us from other fields so rakesh pande is a man gifted with insight and he is working assiduously on uh, indian knowledge systems in shastrik tradition i call upon him and i thank him for joining us and rakesh pande to make his remarks first and if, then i will for 5 minutes again i will request shata udhani ji to make his remarks yes rakesh so <clears throat> yes uh thank you uh, uh professor tripathi uh, mm, uh i must confess right in the beginning is that uh, i think uh, i should have been just quietly listening to this workshop like other participants rather than uh, speaking here as an expert simply because i don't have that uh, expertise in this area uh i am trained in modern history and i work in the area of intellectual history and i am almost like a, a interloper or uh, as we call it in in our own hindi i'm i'm some kind of gustatia in my own tradition and you can imagine when someone who is coming from uh this culture uh has used gustatia uh, to his own tradition you can imagine that uh, there is a certain irony the way we modernists uh, especially in this country uh, in india uh, engage with uh, uh, our own tradition so i have mostly been trying to learn by listening to professor tripathi and various other scholars and i keep myself uh, mostly in hiding uh, just to learn but uh, professor tripathi has been one of my teachers uh i have never sat in his class but i treated him as my teacher and uh, that's why i have accepted to to comment so my comments won't uh, be actually linked to the actual content of his presentation which is already very rich uh, there are many experts who can actually elaborate upon that i have been i'm, I'm going to use this opportunity to to reflect on some of the issues which have been raised here and i must confess that it's one of the most intense uh, workshops i have ever attended uh it's full of ideas and i think we would need some time to to go back and think the kind of questions we are we are raising it's also very special and unique uh the kind of questions it is it's raising so i'm going to make some very brief remarks in three parts first is about this whole question of vada tradition itself uh what do we mean by it we are we are, we are always work we are we are discussing about different technical details about it various textual traditions of it so what exactly is the meaning uh, for us of this vada tradition that's one thing the other thing is that i will very briefly uh, reflect upon uh, the presentation which professor tripathi has made which is about the dialogue in medieval period multilingual and multicultural context and actually i thought a lot about this it's very uh, detail of this very presentation because i think that out of all the presentation this is one where in some senses if i take some freedom to to say so he's actually hinting us to enter into some kind of historical reflection as the term multilingual and multicultural are being used for the vada tradition and the third thing which interests me a lot and uh, which is about to think about what exactly would be some kind of constructive thinking or constructive theory uh, constructive philosophy uh, in indian context and by this i mean like we are the grand consumers of 
for, for a very long time of a certain kind of theory, which is mostly actually coming from the West, especially people who work with the modern disciplines. And there is an interest and this interest comes and goes and nothing substantial actually uh, uh, comes out of it. But at the same time, we keep revisiting this situation. And I, I like to call it some kind of constructive exercise, which need to. So I'll just make some remarks on these three lines. The first is, what is distinctive about the Vada tradition, which is actually we are talking about here. And we know that the Greeks, ancient Greeks had a long uh, tradition of thinking, which was basically centrally a dialogic tradition beginning from Socrates in the pre-Socratic period. And it goes back to, to the, our understanding of most of uh, what we call the ancient traditions or traditions of larger, longer traditions of, of thought. It also leads us to a very different question. And the question is that, what do we mean when we use a term like religion or philosophy, philosophical thought or religious thought, uh, when we talk about the ancient traditions? Vada is central to to understand the very nature of ancient Indian thought, as we, as we call it. And there must be certain specific elements to what we call the Indian tradition of thinking here, or Indian mode of philosophizing. A.K. Ramanujan, a very well-known uh, translator and writer, actually used, uh, wrote a very provocative essay where he actually, in the title itself, it, where he talked about, is there an so-called Indian way of thinking? Being a linguist, what Ramanujan offered us was some kind of morphology or taxonomy of the ways in which Indian mind or Indians in their long intellectual tradition must have been thinking. And he actually gave us two very interesting coined terms, which were coming from grammar or linguistics, because he was a trained linguistics, where he talked about there is a certain way in which some kind of thinking is context sensitive, and there is a certain kind of thinking which is context free. Now it's very interesting to go back to the Vada tradition, which is actually about the certain, both the conceptual mechanism and modes of thinking in Indian tradition. Vada, as we understand, is a mode of argumentation, normally as we understand, a debate with various styles of tricks and cavils and as, as we have talked about from the Nyaya and other systems which mark the very nature of Indian tradition. So one thing is very sure, as the title of uh, Amartya Singh's book goes, that we are the argumentative traditions. We are the thinker who actually love to argue. But we have been learning about that, that very tradition of Vada, uh, that it's just not about debate. And this is what we have been learning in this workshop by various comments made by scholars like uh, Raja Ram Shuklaji and uh, Professor Tripathi himself. In the ordinary sense, as we understand, Vada being the debate, it's true, as I understand, in the deeper understanding of what we call the very understanding of speech itself, or the Vak, or the language, or the Bhasha, and the tradition of meaning as it is central to Indian tradition. So Indian thinking and system, thus a lot of complaints go this way, fail to create the system of what is known in the Western sense is the instrumental reason or a proper scientific technological system. While this is the system which has the most sophisticated uh, architecture of debate and argumentation. Now, this is very, very interesting. We are living with both the cliches, if one can say, that we are the most argumentative and of course we have the most sophisticated system, while at the same time we have failed to create a system which is, but this is just a stereotyping, I'm just uh, flagging it here. Vada, as we have learned here in this workshop, and which is a great message to me, and I've been just thinking about it, which has come both right in the beginning when Professor Tripathi flagged it, the difference between Vada and Samvada. And not only that, he said that the Samvada in itself shall be created a distinct intellectual discipline for us. But Professor Rajaram Shukla in the beginning gave us a very fine Sastric definition of the term Samvada, which was a very good trigger to think about it. 
So in both of the senses, it actually becomes a very, very distinct mode of thinking, as we can say. Vada, as I understand, is based on a very strong theory of, and this is my understanding of the other. In, in our North Indian uh, way, in Hindi, one can say that, and that very other, wo jo anya hai, wo कोई भी हो सकता है या सकता है जैसे कि वो मनुष्य हो सकता है वो प्रकृति हो सकती है वो कोई परंपरा हो सकती है और वह स्व हो सकता है और स्व के कई प्रकार हो सकते हैं और वह अन्य हो सकता है और अन्य के कई प्रकार हो सकते हैं now this way if we understand i think this is something very very crucial as i try to make sense of this whole workshop is that the whole question of the other to whom are we addressing the whole vada system with all its its dialectical sophistication is actually a mode of address and there must be certain commitments and certain protocols of addressing the other or being our connecting to the other now the samvada as we uh, uh, understood is actually a mode to understand that other and in my own way i'm trying to connect both the suggestions which have been made in this workshop is that if the vada is a very sophisticated system of analysis and understanding and uh, uh, and argumentation and we also have a tradition of samvada Mm. then what we get is and what is being hinted here and this is my speculation reflection loud reflection is that then we must have got or we must create a very rich hermeneutic tradition on our own which is actually based on this tradition which is coming from the indian intellectual traditions and of course it will be in dialogue with various other traditions right just few minutes before we were talking about an 11th century uh, traveler and scholar alberuni who was actually creating such a dialogue in my sense also i think it's important to understand and take back the idea of samvada as his which is being suggested here to to back to the vada tradition in a different way i make a claim that in fact samvada itself is some kind of vada is part of the vada tradition in the sense that it transgresses or transcends the dimensions of speech in some senses and it actually hints at a very different way in which vadas can be created or if someone who is very strong in not giving up the the the, the linguistic sense or someone who is coming from the indian uh, philosophy of language tradition uh, would can still say that actually samvada is something which actually takes us us to the level of para and pashyanti or the shabda yoga and yesterday we had some very interesting hints about some modern examples where this kind of samvada samvada through silence actually has actually taken place in modern india itself so can i take some 5 minutes more uh okay you may hello you can i i can't hear you you can take okay thank you the the second the second uh, point i wanted to make is about uh the whole question of dialogue in medieval period and i just want to flag two things here which i just mentioned is that the way the medieval which is now uh, in uh, curiously unfortunately is the very contested term for us in india right now the times in which we are living and when we talk about the multilingualism and the multiculturalism of intellectual traditions of medieval period there is something very very important here and once again we should be grateful for professor professor tripathi there is some deeper suggestion कहीं कोई कहीं कोई बहुत गहरी ध्वनि है हमारे समय के लिए जो इस 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 खास करके इस भाषण में है और ये तीनों ही टर्म्स जो है मिडीवल मल्टीलिंगल एंड मल्टीकल्चरल बींग हिस्टोरियन हुज इंटरेस्टेड इन इन फिलोसॉफिकल टर्म्स एंड कंसेप्चुअल हिस्ट्री आई हैव जस्ट बिन थिंकिंग अबाउट द यूज ऑफ मिडीवल मल्टीलिंगल एंड मल्टीकल्चरल इट्स एंड वाइल वी टॉक अबाउट इंडियन ट्रेडिशन इन सो मेनी वेज 
we rarely focus on the ways what these terms actually mean to us right now when we try to use it. Because I do believe that interacting with concepts or the use of concepts of our contemporary period or of a longer historical period itself is both a challenge to our own Vada system and uh, a model to or and to create a model of the Samvada too. I'm taking, that is why I've been I'm taking some freedom from Professor Tripathi's uh, title of this particular uh, thing. What I want to suggest is that this particular lecture where he has been taught actually suggesting that the intellectual traditions of the medieval period should be actually contextualized in their multilingual and multilingual, uh, multicultural context. I think that it's important that we either enlarge the idea of Vada or we start using the term, which actually in history, in, in intellectual and cultural history we do, is that we are in fact, we have to create the term Vada into a debate, into a some kind of idea of encounter. And I think we, we do talk about encounter in the, in the colonial period, in the modern period, when we have very intense episodes of cultural and intellectual encounter where there is, even in the medieval period. And I think it's a very interesting word because it challenges us to think both the ways in which we go back to the very technical aspects of what we call the scholastic aspects of the Vada tradition or engaging in a debate and then turning a debate into some kind of samvada. And here I'm using the term samvada in the way Rajaram Shuklaji was yesterday uh, uh, suggesting to us that in Shastra, samvada has a very fine distinctive use where actually it is, it, there are certain preconditions through which samvada actually takes place. And it is that samvada is also some kind of uh, uh, invocation to, to create some kind of parity or some kind of uh, a dialogue there. Now, I'll just flag three or four terms here, which I, which I hear uh, in this, uh, which we should concentrate on. Because Professor Tripathi has suggested a very long span of the medieval period. Now, interestingly, it's 16th to 6th to 4th century, roughly from 6th to or 8th, 10th century, it's seen as early medieval period in, in, in the standard history uh, teaching, it's known as early medieval period. There, there, there are phases which are taught like that. So he has covered from that to 14th century. And it's very interesting. So if you just look at two or three distinctions here, one is there is a linguistic context, which is a context of Sanskritic bhasha, which is the vernacular and the Indo-Persian linguistic cultures. So there are three, three large linguistic traditions which are actually evolving, maturing, and actually they all are entering into some kind of Renaissance period in Indian, in, in Indian context. The second is the cultural encounter, which is about, one is about the normative, and the, yesterday we, we heard about the Dharmasastra tradition, the great normative tradition, which is emerging, the Sastra tradition, which is emerging. The second, which is important, is the Puranic religion, tra religious tradition, if you can use that term. And the third, which is again very important, which is linked to the vernacular at the same time, is the devotional cultures, as you know, is the bhakti tradition in there. And then the three more distinctions, which could be called the intellectual distinctions in this long medieval period. One is the rise of the extreme sophistication of Indian epistemology in the Pramana system, in the Pramana epistemology. And then the, in the Alankar Shastra, and thirdly, the larger domain of what we call the Shastra traditions of different disciplines, from astronomy to botany to geology to different uh, to music, musicology, and several other things. What we see here is that the Vada then becomes a context for a very encounter, and we all know that we are misreading this term encounter in our own times and. I think we, we all are educated people, we can actually reflect upon that, that how such a rich context of a Vada and Samvada actually now being turned into a very fractious, contentious moment of encounter. While the history which we are actually listening here, 
is something else which is quite instructive. The last point, and I will stop here, is the point about which is made, which is made about the, the whole issue about dialogic mind itself. And I will just stop by flagging a problem for us, which would be important. And that problem is because I come from a discipline like history, is that the distinction which we make between historical exercise and the critical analytical and philosophical exercise. Now, it's very interesting that this divide is very deep and its divide is very, very difficult to actually fathom or even bridge, even in the Western tradition. But there are interesting ways in which one can actually think about it. And Vada itself is a very good example for that. I actually look at a uh, uh, dialogic pine as the creation of two or three kinds of possibilities. One is that intra-shastra, within the shastras itself, where just imagine I can think of a very good example where uh, Mukundalat, a great thinker of musicology or Indian systems, Indian philosophical systems, actually thinks about or rethinks Indian system of thinking in terms of musicology or alap as he does that. The second is about the dialogue between the dialogic mind, which actually engages with Shastra and the Loka in continuation with Shastra in continuation with or in relation to what we call, call the Loka and Prayoga. And the third is about the very question about the cultures of mind itself. What kind of mind is actually going to nurture could become possibly a dialogic mind. Now it's very interesting story, which we are the stories which we are listening in this workshop. From Alberuni to Dhanya Lok, to one can imagine the great commentary of you know, Bharati, which is actually some kind of great dialogue within the Shastras and the tradition, which comes to extreme sophistication, which in some senses we have not been able to transgress. We are still learning from that is the end of the century, which Professor Tripathi suggests. By 14th century, Gangesha Upadhyay actually gives us a model of the most precise and sophisticated way of making sense of things. If making sense of things is the idea of thinking itself, philosophizing and understanding or engaging in critical dialogue. So what in the end I would uh, suggest is that I think that we have a very rich possibility to create or think hard about our own hermeneutic possibilities, which are, which is actually about our own samvada possibilities, if I can use the term for, for hermeneutics as samvada. So one can ask me that whatever you are telling, what, what, what concern does it have with, with medieval period? Simply because to me, medieval, the concept is as much a part of my Vada tradition. What do I see as my medieval? And I think for this, before we enter into a long intellectual debate, we should think that in our everyday life, TV channels, to our newspapers, even to our seminars and classrooms, the term medieval is silently the greatest Uru Paksha which is staring at us. We simply don't know what to do with that. Uh, medieval as our Uru Paksha which is staring at us. What I'm saying is that at the same time, we should think about our own possibilities of Samvada, which can happen with Prachina, which can happen with our Sastric tradition, which can happen with a historicist category. We should remember medieval is a historicist category which is given to us. So for a historian like me, it's a category when I use, I just don't, do, don't use it in vacuum. I use it with, again, and I think that why don't I go back to my own Gangesh? And why don't I go back to my own Ahino? Mm. Despite from various other modern traditions which I've inherited, which I, I've been trained in, and think, learn to think, to make sense of things precisely with the responsibility which Samvada brings. Because remember that Samvada actually imposes us or maybe in, is an invocation to recognize the other. It, the other could be the, uh, the para or the other could be myself. 
So this is part of what I'm sharing with you are some very rudimentary ideas of what I could call is that what we say about the Swaraj of ideas in India and the term Swaraj is actually going through its very bad phase. Everyone is using is in a very, very casual sense. So I'm saying that there is a real meaning to it. And that meaning is would can, can only come through this reviving rethinking the tradition of Bada and Sambada in a humanistic spirit, in a spirit to create a new humanistic knowledge. Just me. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking so much of time, but these are the things which I came, uh, ideas came to an outsider. So my apologies and my gratefulness to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh. Uh, it was a wonderful experience to listen to you. Uh, and uh, thank you for all these very pertinent, insightful remarks. They were illuminating uh, for me. And uh, they will go a long way with us when we, in the concluding session or valedictory session, talk of the strategies we should adopt to we should adopt for the furtherance of the dialogues, whatever dialogues we have tried to create here during these four days. We have already transgressed the limits, limits of time, but still like